Well, so. thank you. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. My name is Andrea Shichova, and uh, I hope I don't disappoint you, but uh, my uh, profession is not computer science. I study psychology, and I will talk about Tablexia, the app for uh, children with dyslexia from the perspective of my position. I am some kind of coordinator of this project from the very beginning and yeah, I will tell you more about it. But I firstly should tell that uh, we developed Tablexia in CZNIC, which is actually an um, association, non-profit association, which uh, uh, takes care, I, I'm sorry for my language, but I don't understand that so much, but takes care of the seeds see that domain registry so uh, I work in the in the department of research and development which is called labs and uh, we do a lot of open source development there and uh, you may know for example Turis Omnia which is our new router which is open source based and we also develop not ENS and BERT but I will tell you about Ablexia, which is an app for Android and iOS, and it is cognitive training for children with dyslexia. And we are based, uh, we are specialized on the, on the older children because the reason why we realized that we want to develop this game was because uh, there was a lot of teachers and psychologists who told us well, it's fine, we can do a lot of education with these children, but they are not motivated, and especially all the children are not motivated to do anything for them and to, to uh, uh, being better. So we realized we want to make a game to, uh, for them to, to have fun, and at the same time to force them a bit to do something for them. So that is now available in Czech, Slovak and, and German language. We started with the Czech version, but then uh, our colleagues from Slovak told us that they would like to have the, the app as well, and then we realized that it uh, uh, could be fun to do it also in German. And now Tablexia contains eight games which are connected in detective topics. So there is young detective who is trying to become better detective and learn how to how to do that. Tablexia is already available for free on uh, on Android and iOS and it's used already in many schools and counseling facilities in Czech Republic and also in, in Slovakia and Germany. But we try to convince children to use it also on their own without being forced from schools and other facilities. I would like to tell a bit about what dyslexia actually is, because I'm not sure if it's clear what, what I mean with, with, when I say dyslexia. So it's one of the specific learning disabilities, which means that people who have dyslexia are problems, have problems with reading and writing. But the problems with reading and writing are caused because of some deficit in cognitive functions. It means that, firstly, those people have some problems with attention or working memory, which cause the problems with reading and writing. And we also used to say a lot that people with dyslexia are using a lot of different strategies how to learn. So when they have problems with in some part of this cognitive functions, they are trying to avoid that and in using different learning strategies. So Tablexia should help them to find the, um, the way how to getting better and how to find the, the things that work for them and where are their weaknesses. We are not doing that alone in CZNIC. We are cooperating with uh, some different universities, especially Charles University in Prague, the Department of Psychology, where I study. And uh, we, we consult all the work we, we do on the app with uh, Lenka Krejčová, who is a specialist on 
special educational problems and uh, who helps us to, to make the app really working. And we also uh, worked with uh, Constant in the Philosopher University in Nitra, where uh, some people uh, helped us with developing the Slovak version, and also University in Vienna, uh, where we developed the German version. And now we are doing a bit of research on Chemnitz University of Technology. And speaking about technology, I would say just a few words about, about um, the technological part of the app. We firstly developed it just for Android because it's uh, used uh, like, yeah, I think in 80% of, of cases where uh, we want people to, to use tablets, yeah, it's, uh, they, they use smartphones or tablets with Android. So we decided to to do that in end engine, but then there was a lot of people who told us that they would like to use it also for iOS. So we decided for some cross-platform development, and because the app is already written in Java, uh, we decided to use libgdx, which uh, allowed us to make the app in for iOS and Android at the same time. And there's also option to make it on desktop, which we are going to, to try this year if it works and if it really uh, works the same, the same way as on, on tablets. And all the app with all the content, all sounds and pictures, it's open source under the license GPL. And you can find the uh, project on GitLab. We also do a lot of testing with the app because from the very beginning we tried to, to really use children with dyslexia as the people who should tell us if it works as it should and, and if they like it and if they understand what they should do. But yeah, every time we have some new game which we develop, <coughs> we firstly try that on our own if, if we are able even to, to play that and if we think that it's okay, we are going to schools and uh, we are asking children what they think about it. And we also are trying to make the game so difficult that the children are really learning something new, but at the same time not so difficult to yeah, help them to really have fun, not just be disappointed and frustrated. And now we are also trying to focus more about the effectivity of the app because it's it's really interesting question if it really helps if it really if if we let people to play some games if it helps them to be better in reading and writing so we try to make some pre post test design to find out if if it's true but uh, to be honest it's quite difficult because we need to find a lot of children with the dyslexia, it means they should have the diagnose and collect them together and let them play the game for some time. So, I don't know, for like six or seven weeks at least, three times a week. But we are trying to cooperate on that with schools, but we uh, found out that children are not going to school so much. I don't know. <laughs> how it's possible, but <laughs> they are missing all the time, so it's, it's really hard to catch them. And we are still working on the app, so we plan to make 10 games. So there is two, two left which we want to develop this year, and uh, we also try to focus on the desktop version. And there was also a lot of questions about our languages, because the, the first question you may be have is why is it not in English? But <laughs> it's quite difficult because as we uh, wanted to make an app which would work for Czech children, we focused on, on Czech language. Dyslexia is based on the specificity of each language. So people with dyslexia uh, struggle with something else in Czech than in English. So it's not so easy to make games to be so yeah, transformable to, to other languages. I will show you some slides from the game so you will see maybe more about what I'm talking now. And we also, from the, from the data we have from the app, we found out that we already have some problems with German version because 
in some parts of the app where there is a lot of uh, reading text, uh, the German version is much um, harder for the children than the Czech version because there is a lot of like huge German words which are not so easy to, to read. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that's what we are going to try to fix. You can see here, this is the first game we have there. Who understands a uh, German can read that. It's, it says rubber, or in this case in German, it's, it's quite uh, complicated because there is a lot of like gender um, correctness. And for example, in Czech language, we don't have a word for woman detective or woman no detective yes, but not a woman robber no i'm sorry um, yeah whatever but, <laughs> but in german we have to write that all the time both so uh, this is the beginning of the game starting to be more complicated in german language because they need to read two words instead of one at the beginning and then you can see there is um, robber has some uh, um, yellow whatever something on him and, and some some passes and the, the task is to read this uh, uh, this um, this information and then you will see some people coming into a shop and you have to find out who was the robber so in this case it was uh, the, the picture is not belonging to the text before but it would be quite Easy because you can just say, okay, this one has this. But then there are some more complicated instructions. For example, the robber is a person who has the same trousers as the person who comes before him. So the people have to really focus more on the on the content on, and uh, use their working memory. This is another game which is on spatial orientation. So in this task, uh, children have to put the map together to find out where the robbers are hidden and there are different maps and, and there, each game has three different levels of difficulty so this is the, the easiest one and then you have uh, four, two, four times four and five times five maps. This game is on phonological uh, recognition and, and analysis and you hear some voices and you have to find out which one is the right one. So firstly you see some, some word and then you have to find from these three options, you can see with the uh, signs there, which one was the right. And in the more difficult version there is some, uh, uh, some letter missing in the middle of the word so it's even more difficult to, to find out. And there was also one of the games which uh, was quite complicated to make in German because uh, the German works some kind of different in pronunciation, pronouncing words than uh, than English, uh, than Czech, and even in English. When we were uh, thinking about it, it was yeah, it seemed even even worse. This is a game for uh, training uh, visual memory, where. Uh, the detective sees some, some windows and at the same time he sees a um, watch where some, uh, some time appears and they have to then uh, um, press the, the right windows and uh, uh, put there the, the right time <coughs> when it appeared. This game um, is shooting range. It's when we started to, to test the, the app with children, uh, we asked them what other game they would like to have there, and they all told us, okay, we want to shoot someone. And we were like, yeah, you know, it's not really that what we want to do. So we tried to put them the shooting in the game, but not on the people. So yeah, they don't like that so much, but <laughs> at least we tried. So this game is um, the training of attention. You can see the, the flower there on the mm, right corner. So the, the, the flower is randomly changing and they have to uh, shoot the, the right flowers on the screen. This one game is um, 
it's called in the darkness, but it's not really in the dark. But imagine that uh, you are here, you are this small person, and are trying to go there to the safe. And you have to plan your way to the safe through this labyrinth or building. So you have these kind of blocks, of tasks what you can do. You can walk one step, or you can turn, or you can jump across the, the door, or you can open the door. So you have to plan that. And if you are finished, then you can go and you will see if you did that right. Then we have uh, visual recognition. So you can see some symbols here. And you can see also the same symbols there. So the task in this is the E level. It's to just find the, the right symbol. But uh, in the uh, <coughs> more complicated version, the symbols are reversed. So they have to manipulate the symbol in their uh, mind before. And uh, then there is also a version where there is more symbols on the same place, so they have to find it in the middle of them. And this is for now the last game, which is on the um, phonological memory. So they hear at the beginning some kind of um, sounds. There is, for example, three sounds in, in the beginning, and then they see this room. <coughs> they have to find out what was the sounds and in which order they they were, so they put then the subjects which made the sound in the order here. And uh, there is also some other parts of the, of the app, which is this Hall of Fame, where you can see that uh, when you are good and you are really uh, getting better, you are also gaining some, some trophies and special special prizes and here you can also see there are some some badges which show how good detective you are there's also some part which is called statistics which shows how are you doing in the app and uh, if you are getting better or not or if there is something what you should train more or something what you shouldn't do at all and this is also a part which is called Encyclopedia. This slide is from a from web page because the app is obviously not in, in English. But um, this is how it looks like. So you have here some kind of uh, things which are explained to the, to the children what that actually means that they have some kind of dyslexia or so because they are sometimes really interested in that. But um, yeah, we, we realize that there is, like for example, there and sometimes even don't know what that means. So we try to make that uh, easier for them to understand. And there is, at the end, uh, some tip what they can do to uh, learn better. And uh, all the texts are also with, with recording, so they can hear that at the same time they read it, which helps them to, to understand it better. And that's it for me. I thank you for your attention. Saying you want to translate languages. What kind of people are you <laughs> Well, um, yeah, the, the question was what uh, kind of people we are looking for to translate the, the app in other languages. Um, yeah, translation is easy, but it's, it's complicated in the meaning of the dyslexia. So we need some kind of expert, as we did that in, for example, with the German version. We asked a person on the University of Vienna who understands dyslexia in German context. And um, yeah, so, so that's basically what, what we need. That's the, the biggest problem we have. Because we have people who are programming that, and yeah, then we of course need some native speaker to uh, record all the text, but that's also not such a big deal. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> By anecdotal evidence, does it work? Um, okay, we asked the people who are uh, really working with app, who are giving that to children on a daily basis, and they told us 
we think it works. We saw some kind of evidence. We see that if they do this task, then they are getting better in this real life task. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh, that was a question. Uh, so, these games are to help kids with dyslexia, but can they also be used, or like, or similar games to diagnose it, or like, you know, of, like, are there any plans that as well? Uh, uh, the question was if we can use the app also to diagnose dyslexia. Well, we can't. It's, it's quite complicated, but we can say in which particular uh, cognitive functions are some deficits. So we can say, yeah, okay, spatial orientation, it's a bit problem, but you are really good in working memory. But we can't say, okay, you are dyslexic. Yeah, that was... Okay. Yep. How long have you been working to get where you are? Uh, four years. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the question was how long uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it took to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I saw earlier when you were about to uh, uh, some kind of test to actually get data on how effective it is. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I understand the question. You were going to do some tests to see how effective it was. Do you have any idea when that will be? Yeah, we all already started with that. And um, the question was, I'm sorry, <laughs> the question was uh, what or how we, st or if we already did some kind of effectiveness research or are we going? We started in, in last year, we did some kind of pilot testing but the thing is that it's even hard to to t tell what should be the test we use to find out if it really will or works so we have some kind of cognitive tests but is that really what we want to measure and then we have some kind of reading and writing tests but the problem is that for these older children 11 to 15 there is for example, in Czech Republic, there's not so much test we can use. And they already know the test because those are the tests they were measured with to be diagnosed with <coughs> dyslexia. So they, the tests are already biased. Yep. Have you tested against uh, school zones or something like that? It's not transferable. It's cool to all the <laughs> yeah, the, the question was if we uh, try to measure that against the uh, test results or, or school results. It's not what we can actually. I, I don't think it's a good idea at all because. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there room in the school agenda to use your, your tool uh, during like, school lessons? Do you know whether the dyslexic uh, children are in the normal school with a child? Or yeah, usually they are in normal schools because the, the, the deficit is usually not so huge to make them being in, in some special schools. But there are in, in, in the schools sometimes some classes where only the children with dyslexia are be from different classes but for this one lesson where they are doing some kind of re-education so they are doing this like cognitive uh, trainings and also some some kind of like reading and writing trainings too yeah and there is also a lot of like um, facilities where people with dyslexia are attending some kind of re-education with, uh, without the, the school context, so it's in their free time, let's say. As a kind of remedial teaching as well. Yeah. If you make a Dutch version, there are a lot of possible candidates for that. Yeah, we already... Yes, there are a lot of new... I am a teacher and we have a lot of kids with dyslexia. Yeah. So, and we're always looking for a way to put that in and give them extra uh, attention to, uh, uh, to, uh, to work with these problems. It will work. Yeah, we were already in contact with some people from, uh, from um, Netherlands and, and Belgium, but it didn't work out. It's, it's quite a complicated process to put that all together, and we are now focused on finishing 10 games, and then we can maybe easily 
transfer is yeah more easy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think we're gonna have to stop there. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent.